بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We continue with the 17th chapter سورة الإسراء It has 111 verses and the meaning of the name الإسراء is رحلة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الليلا مع جبريل عليه السلام على دابة البراق بجسده وروحه صلى الله عليه وسلم معا من المسجد الحرام بمكة المكرمة إلى المسجد الأقصى بفلسطين So the meaning of it is that it is referring to that trip the journey that the Messenger the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had that night in the company of Jibreel the Archangel Gabriel may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him riding that uh, mysterious beast, the Buraq, and this happened with his body and his soul, both. To address this question, and uh, you know, we know that there's some difference as to was it with his soul or was it both body and soul, and the position in Allah knows best is that it is both of them, both with his body and his soul, and this trip, this journey took place from Mecca to Jerusalem of Palestine. The reason why this chapter is named is infirad surati bi dhikri mu'jizatil isra. The reason is because of the only place in the Quran that this miracle of the Prophet Ali's night journey, that it's basically through this uh, in this chapter, and therefore it has taken on that name. Ismuha, so this chapter is known by more than the name of Al Isra. It is also known as Surah to Bani Israel as well as Surah to Subhan. So it is known by all three of these names. وَمَقْصِدُهَا الْعَامِ Its main objective is بَيَانُ شَخْصِيَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَفَضْلِهِ وَرِسَالَتِ That Allah Rabbul Alameen in this chapter is basically establishing with regards to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam his persona, his being, who he is, as well as the, the special value that he has, the merit that he has, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his message, the message that he has come with. وَوَصْفُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ الْمُعَارِضِينَ لِلْرِسَالَةِ And Allah Rabbul Alameen also in this chapter addresses those who took the stance of rejecting the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, disbelieving and taking the position of enmity towards him sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to the reason why this chapter was revealed we're told that it is a meccan chapter and although we don't have a reason for the entirety of the chapter being revealed we certainly do have some of those verses from that chapter from this chapter uh, that we do have reasons why those verses were revealed fadluha the virtues and merits of this chapter we have um, a few. So the first is تُسْتَحَبُّ قِرَاءَتُهَا قَبْلَ النَّوْمِ The first is that we're told that it is recommended to read it before you go to sleep. The evidence for this is a hadith that At-Tirmidhi has collected and it is authentic. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentions كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا يَنَامُ عَلَى فِرَاشِهِ حَتَّى يَقْرَأْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَالزُّمَرِ she says that the Prophet ﷺ would not sleep while he was on his bed until he had finished, until he had finished reading Surah Al -Isra, Bani Israel, which is among the names for Al Isra, and Surah Al Zumar. And just in case somebody is saying, "Oh my God, that's such a big surah! How am I supposed to read that every night before I go to sleep?" It's not mandatory. It is a sunnah. So even if you did this once in your lifetime, you will, inshallah Taala, alhamdulillah, have done something fantastic. What's the second virtue? We're told مِنْ أَوَائِلِ مَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ That it is from among the earliest of scripture that was revealed, the earliest of, of Qur'an that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَعَنْ إِبْنِ مَسْعُودٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالْ Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him, said, uh, he said with regards to فِي بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ قَالَ فِي بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ وَالْكَحْفِ وَمَرْيَمَ وَطَاحَةَ وَالْأَنْبِيَاء so the statement of, of uh, Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him, it's regarding the following surahs. 
Al-Isra, which he calls also Bani Israel, Al-Kahf, Maryam, Taha, wal anbiya These five chapters, he says, Hunna min al-Itaq al-Uwwal, wa hunna min tiladi. What he says is that these are from the first of what was revealed of the Qur'an and it is from that which I have learnt. And it is from that which I have learnt. And this is a, uh, this hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari. The third virtue is, we're told, al-Isra'u min al-Musabbihat that it is from those chapters that begin with tasbih, with the declaration that Allah is perfect. And we're told, أَتَى رَجُلٌ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالْ أَقْرِئْنِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَقَالْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ اِقْرَأْ ثَلَاثَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحَاتِ So we're told that a man went to the Prophet, to Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, and he said to him, Tell me what I should read, O Messenger of Allah. And he said to him, read three chapters from those that begin with tasbih, that begin with the declaration that Allah is perfect. And this hadith is sahih, it is collected by Abu Dawood. Well, how about looking at the correlation of the beginning of the chapter to the end of it? We're told, ta'ala, that it's about Declaring Allah Ta'ala is perfect, that Allah Azawajal is perfect. فَقَالَ فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا سُبْحَانَ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ Allah Ta'ala begins the chapter by saying, Perfect is he, the one who has taken his worship or his servant for the night journey. وَقَالَ فِي خَاتِمَتِهَا And he concludes the chapter by saying, وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدْ وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدْ He concludes it by saying, and say, all praise and thanks are for Allah, whom never took a child, never took a son, never begot a, an offspring, does not have children. So to praise and thank Allah who has no children. So he begins it by the declaration that he's perfect and in the end he basically tells us how we praise and thank him and gives an explanation, an example of how he is perfect and that is he does not have any children. He does not have any children. He has not selected or picked anything from his creation to be his offspring. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and that he has no parents. He has no siblings. He has no partner. He has no children. He is the absolute one subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, what about the relationship of this chapter, Al-Isra, with Al-Nahl? We're told, لَمَّا خُتِمَتِ النَّحْلُ بِمَعِيَّةِ اللَّهِ تَعَلَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ فِي قَوْلِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ That when Allah Ta'ala, He concluded Al-Nahl with the declaration that He is near and close to those who are muttaqeen, uh, those who live with taqwa, saying, certainly Allah is with those who live with taqwa and those who are beautiful. اُفْتُتِحَتِ الْإِسْرَاءُ بِضَرْبِ مِثَالٍ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْمَعِيَّةِ لِإِمَامِ الْمُتَّقِينَ صلى الله عليه وسلم بِمُعْجِزَةِ الْإِسْرَاءُ Look how beautiful, subhanAllah. That Allah Rabbu Alameen begins this chapter of Al-Isra by giving a most beautiful, a most beautiful, real example of how Allah Rabbul Alameen is close and is near by mentioning specifically the chieftain, the leader of all those who are righteous, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this miraculous journey that Allah Ta'ala gave to the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, taking him from Mecca to, Medi to, to Jerusalem, pardon me, and then lifting him up through the heavens, bringing him to have that most amazing encounter in paradise with Allah Rabbul Alameen. So you see, subhanAllah, the way that Allah Rabbul Alameen has authored His final revelation for humanity, if we were to ponder it, we would come to see that even though it may appear at times that there's a sense of incoherency because of what is mentioned, but we'll come to see that it is very coherent and it is certainly 
of higher orders of thinking and that no matter how much a person, a scholar were to give to study it and to understand it, that there would be still more that they can extract from it of blessings and of that which expand not just their mind but their faith. We ask Allah Rabbul Alameen to truly bless us to be scholars who study His Word, His revelation, that we put it to heart and that we grow in our understanding, we grow in our intellectual capacities and that we also direct, directly proportional to that grow in our faith as well as in our nearness to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma rabbana ameen wa salli allahumma wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyya Muhammad.